tonight on Cox Forum. Big changes are coming to Orange County. The legendary Crystal Cathedral will soon be changing hands, and it's been suggested that it'll become the second most significant Catholic cultural center in the world outside of the Vatican. We'll visit with local leaders who are making that vision a reality right here in our community. Also, we'll be showcasing our new Cox Government and Cox Community Spotlight segments here on Cox Forum, straight ahead. Welcome to Cox Forum. The Crystal Cathedral of Orange County has long been an iconic architectural landmark here in Orange County. Recently, it was purchased by the Catholic Diocese of Orange in Federal Bankruptcy Court for $57 million. Tonight, I'm joined by Tisha, Bishop Todd Brown for the Diocese of Orange, as well as Tim Bush, the co-chair of the Bishop's Campaign Cabinet. Welcome, gentlemen. Good to be Thank here. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Bishop Brown, when did you first hear the bankruptcy and the possible acquisition? Well, Art, I first heard about it when I read it in the paper in October of uh, 2010 uh, that the uh, Crystal Cathedral Ministry had filed for bankruptcy, and I was very surprised. I'll bet. Well, tell me about some of the ups and downs of the progress, uh, maybe the obstacles you've had to overcome and how you managed through it. Well, first of all, I felt very badly about the fact that uh, the uh, Crystal Cathedral community had to file for bankruptcy. and. Uh, it was my hope that they would be able to successfully navigate through that process and, and return to their uh, to a healthy financial state. It never crossed my mind at the time in, uh, in the fall of 2010 that the Catholic Church would be involved in the ultimate acquisition of that incredible uh, uh, cathedral and its campus. Well, what does the acquisition mean to the Diocese of Orange and to the Catholic Church in America? Well. I'll just start with the Diocese of Orange. It will give us a new headquarters. It will become our spiritual center for our uh, over 1.2 million Catholics here in Orange County. And uh, it will hopefully continue as a wonderful uh, uh, venue for uh, civic events and uh, a place of uh, worship and quiet for everyone of goodwill here in the county. And you have a new name. Tell, tell me about that. How did you arrive at that name? Well, you know, uh, I uh, invited our parishioners to make suggestions about the new name for the cathedral when it became a Catholic cathedral. And we had, uh, I think it was like 4,227 suggestions. And uh, Christ Cathedral is one of the top four choices. And it seemed to me that after having some more consultation, that was going to be the best uh, uh, title for us since that's what Christianity is all about. It's about Christ. Tim, let me ask you a question. There are times during the bankruptcy mm -hmm. proceedings when it didn't appear favorable. Uh, can you tell me what happened? Well, there was a, a stocking horse offer to purchase it, which was a secular organization that wanted to acquire uh, the campus. And then, of course, a fray of offers came in, including our own. And there was a back and forth horse race on valuation. Uh, ultimately, it came down to two bits, Chapman University and the, the Roman Catholic Diocese of Winch. And when we first went in uh, to the first hearing, uh, we had made a bid that was higher than Chapman University, so we thought we would get it. But in fact, Chapman University was uh, selected as the preferred offer. Uh, well, they, they increased their offer, so the judge returned us uh, back a month later uh, to court to have another hearing uh, to see if the new offer was, uh, new and improved offer was viable, expecting that Chapman University, who was now in the pole position, would be the final bidder, and it came back the opposite. The board had reversed its decision and decided to elect the Roman Catholic Diocese of Orange, even though at that point we had a, 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 a lower offer. Why do you think that was? It was about its use. I mean, I think the board, uh, through some uh, changes in board membership, uh, was awakened to the idea that this was built as a place of worship. And al although Chapman University had a very noble cause, and in many ways was a better offer for the ministry, ultimately much of the campus was going to be used for something other than the worship of Jesus Christ. And I believe that the mm -hmm. board realized that, knew that all the creditors were going to be paid under either offer, and so they decided to accept ours. Got it. I think it was very important to uh, Dr. Schuler that the the cathedral itself continue with Christian worship and the campus continue with Christian ministry. He knew that we could provide that. 
Bishop, it's, it, from what I read, seems like there's been an awful lot of sensitivity made in the transition for, for the Protestant community. Can you t speak to a little bit of that? Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, I felt very badly for the community when they had to file bankruptcy. And then ultimately, when they lost, uh, lost the cathedral and the campus, uh, this is a place that uh, so much of their time and effort and hearts and, uh, and monies had been put into for decades. And uh, it was like losing a family or a family member, something very, very precious. So I was determined that we had to be as sensitive as possible in our dealing with them. And that was the situation from the very beginning. And once we took the property over it, there's been a transition team and the, uh, uh, the working relationship has been very, very cooperative. Got it. Tim, let me ask you another question about um, <clears throat> the capital campaign. Let's, let's ask about the capital campaign. I understand that, that there's been a, a capital campaign that's been announced. Can you talk a little bit through that? Yes, this is the first diocesan-wide capital campaign for the Diocese of Orange since its founding in 1976, so 36 years. Uh, many uh, dioceses conduct campaigns like this even when there's not a cathedral involved. In this case, it's for $100 million, uh, and it's primarily for the purchase and renovation of the cathedral, but it also includes uh, needs of schools, priest retirement, and the parishes themselves. So uh, it's very exciting. It's an opportunity to engage 30, we expect 35,000 donors to the uh, campaign, and it will allow everybody to have ownership and to have a support in this incredible icon that's once of a, in a lifetime opportunity. If people wanted to learn more about the capital campaign, how could they find out about it? Well, they can go to the website for the Diocese of Orange, and then we have an organization called the Orange Catholic Foundation, which is uh, orchestrating the entire campaign. Got it. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for being our guest today. And uh, we have another guest after this to talk a little bit more about the, uh, the transition of the Crystal Cathedral to the new Christ Cathedral. Thank you, Art. Thank you very much, Art. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Joining me now are Father Christopher Smith, Rector and Episcopal Vicar of Christ Catholic Church Cathedral, and Rob Neal, the Interim COO of the Christ Catholic Cathedral Corporation. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Rob, first question for you. Yes. In most news reports, the acquisition refers to the Crystal Cathedral. There's much more, though, than the icon itself. What is it that the diocese now owns? Well, Art, that's a great question. The diocese owns really a fully mixed-use campus. The campus is totals about 34 acres and has over 300,000 square feet of various properties on it. So most people think of the Crystal Cathedral as uh, the church itself, and of course that's the most important building on the property, but there's seven other major buildings designed by three of the greatest American architects, frankly, who've ever lived. And uh, what's most important to me as a developer is that there's 1,700 parking stalls. So we have a place to park everyone who comes to our great Crystal Cathedral at the campus. Well, since you touched upon it, uh, let's talk a little bit about the architecture. I mean, obviously, you know, the Crystal Cathedral is very modern in its look. And some people might have some trouble reconciling that with the traditional look and feel of a Catholic church. Can mm -hmm. you kind of tell me a little bit about what's on your mind there? Well, that'll be a challenge, to be sure. Uh, we are fortunate in that we have some of the finest people in Orange County that are joining our effort. And uh, the corporation that owns the cathedral uh, has put together a architectural and renovation committee. And that committee will be selecting what's called a liturgical consultant. And the liturgical consultant will advise the committee on the things that are important uh, in terms of uh, religious matters, but will also guide the committee in the selection of a what we believe will be a world-class architect, which will be brought to Orange County to assist us in the redesign of the cathedral. So 
Is there a vision already going in that's going to guide and shepherd the liturgical group to? Well, one of the wonderful things, Art, about this particular property, this campus, and I think what's a hallmark of great architecture is that everyone uh, has a vision in their mind's eye of what this property could be. And I think that's what great architecture does. It evokes from people uh, various feelings, very strong feelings, and, and we've found that the property does that in a very positive way. So what's the timeline for when Christ Cathedral realizes its vision? Uh, we believe that the cathedral will be open uh, to worship sometime in the year uh, 2015. So first mass will be in 2015? That's our best guess at this point. Got it. Well, Father Smith, if you were recently quoted as saying that the cathedral property might someday become the second most significant Catholic cultural center in the world outside of the Vatican. What do you mean by that? Well, the campus is an internationally known venue. It's visited by people throughout the world. And so there's an automatic attraction of people. And we believe that when we have our Catholic presence there with our liturgical services, with seminars, lectures, cultural events, that we will, in fact, draw a lot of people to the campus. And it will become, we hope, a very important place for good Catholic thought to happen, a place for ecumenical relations to be built among other Christian churches, and religions throughout the world, hopefully, will find a place of welcome at our campus. And we believe that we really have the possibility of that happening mostly because of where it is located, the architecture that's there, and really the vision of a lot of people who are putting this together. Okay. Well, beginning next year, you'll have a diocesan parish and school on the grounds of the campus. Yes. How will that work? Well, the parish will be the cathedral parish, and it's a bit unusual for cathedrals in the sense that most cathedrals are located in downtown areas of cities that don't have a lot of population. People come in and out of the city. We will have a working parish. Eight to 10,000 people come to the present St. Callistus Church as it is. And we have masses in Spanish, English, and Vietnamese. And all the parish activities and functions will go on there, which will give a, a vibrancy to this cathedral campus in a way that is not characteristic of other cathedrals. Well, you sound very energized and excited about this. Would you, how, how's the reaction been so far in the Catholic community in Orange County and at large? Well, you know, at first I think there was a lot of skepticism. Um, was this a good idea? Should we have done this or not? Uh, maybe we should have built our own cathedral as the plans called for. But when people come to the campus and see the buildings, to see the expanse of it, get the feel of the place, it becomes very energizing. And so I think what was once skepticism has turned into excitement and hope for the possibilities that we have ahead of us. Got it. Well, Rob, let me get back to you. You know, there's, it's a, there's a 60 million, 50, 60 million dollar capital campaign that is going concurrent with some of the, the with the purchase of the property. How does that, like, how do those resources come into some of the development? Well, our, the capital campaign will actually raise a hundred million dollars, and of that hundred million dollars, about 55 million dollars will be allocated to the cathedral and the campus. And that will cover a variety of areas, including the renovation of various uh, campus buildings. But most of that money will be spent on the cathedral, uh, reorienting it to a Catholic worship, a Catholic orientation. And uh, it's, as I said, it's our anticipation that uh, the property, the cathedral will be ready for worship sometime in 2015 after about 30 months of design, uh, permitting, and construction. Let me, I'm sure you guys have probably talked a lot with a lot of designers. Is there any idea that's popped to you, something that you really, on your wish list of this $100 million campaign that would be the one thing you would really most like to include? Well, what's wonderful about this campus is, is that there is so much that's remarkable about it. We really feel that we are, in fact, stewards of all of the great work that's gone before us. Uh, the Crystal Cathedral Ministries has been on the property for over 50 years, and there have been an extraordinary amount of uh, donations and sweat 
uh, and perspiration and commitment to build the campus into what it is. And so much of what we'll be doing is to renovate and refurbish the campus. And in doing so, we think that we honor those that came before us. People wanted to learn more about what was happening at the campaign and with, with the foundation. Where would they go to learn? Well, they could go to the uh, website, uh, the Orange Catholic Foundation, which is the uh, uh, development arm for the Diocese of Orange. Got it. And what's the website again? Father, what's the website? I don't know. <laughs> well, we happen to have it on the screen. <laughs> I guess it's www.oc-foundation.org. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in. A lot of Catholic friends of mine have had nothing but excitement, and we're looking forward to seeing what we 2015. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thanks, guys. Well, uh, stay tuned. Coming up, that will be... Excuse me, first time doing this. We'll be premiering our Cox Government Spotlight segment featuring local city officials and people in our community that are making a difference. 